Hello everyone, I hope you are doing well. So in this video, we are going to discuss Geeks for Geeks problem of the day and today's problem is cutting binary string and it is a medium level problem. So before starting with the problem, I just wanted to say that uh, if at the end of this video, you feel that this video was helpful for you and you were able to derive some value from this video, then don't forget to like this video and also share your thoughts in the comments what you felt about today's problem of the day because uh, like engagement like this will really help the YouTube algorithm to understand that this video was actually good and you were able to find some value in it and you enjoyed the content. So this particular video will be able to reach more people like you who want to solve new problems. So let us quickly start with the problem description what it says now. So it says that we have been given a string s consisting of zeros and ones. So it is a binary string and we have to return the smallest positive integer c such that the binary string can be cut into c pieces. It should not contain reading zeros and it should be a power of 5. So for this particular problem, I would say like this was a very uh, like simple and interesting problem. This problem was not very difficult. If you know basic DP, then you will be able to solve it. And uh, again, at the same time, it was very interesting because like this was the first time I encountered a problem like this. So let us uh, quickly look at the sample test case. So I will also explain like why you can always solve this problem with DP and why greedy will not work. So let's say uh, this is the sample test case. So this 101. 101, 101, this is the input string and you see 101 is equal to 5 actually, right. So this is equal to 5, this is equal to 5. So obviously these three numbers are equal to 5 raised to the power 1 and that is equal to 5 itself, right. So this is the minimum number of uh, strings I can divide the original string into, right. So this is one piece, one piece, one piece, but the total number of strings is 3, right. This is the only way possible. So there is no other configuration possible so that all the substrings are a power of 5 and it is smaller than this particular value 3, right. So like uh, the first thing is uh, you might think of a greedy approach wherein let's say you have some binary string like this, there are some zeros and ones present here. Let's say you found out that starting from the first position that uh, string of length, let's say this is 6, right. You find out the string of length 6, this particular string is a power of 5, right. You would want to take this particular string and let's say you want to find the answer on the remaining string. But there might be a case when you just took this particular string of length 6, this was actually a power of 5 that uh, was correct. But the remaining string cannot form any powers of 5, right. So in that case, this would not be a valid answer because we want all of the strings to be a power of 5. But in the same case, it might be like for the first 3 strings, you were able to find a power of 5 and for the remaining 5 strings, again a power of 5 was formed, right. So you are trying to minimize your answer by taking the maximum length of the string first. But in that particular case, the answer might not exist. So there might also be a case where even by taking a smaller string, the remaining string will form a valid answer and uh, it might be even smaller than this particular case, right. So uh, what we have to do is for each of the positions, we have to check whether the current string can, is a power of 5 and whether the remaining string can form a power of 5 or not. If it can form, what does the minimum number of ways? It can form a power of 5. So let me discuss how you can solve this problem properly with DP. So we will maintain a DP array with a single state and DP of i will denote what is the minimum number of strings, minimum number of strings. I need to divide like starting from i, starting from position i, right. So DP of i will store the minimum number of strings. I need to divide my current strings into such that they all are power of 5 and it, the value is obviously minimum, right. So dp of i will store, store the answer for the string starting from index i. So obviously dp of 0, dp of 0 will store my final answer, right. So this is the first thing. Now what I can do is for each of these i, right, I can start traversing uh, a value j which is starting from i till less than n, right. So for all these values of j, I will find out whether the string starting from i and ending at j is a good string or not. What do I mean by good? Good string means that it should be a power of 5, right. So I can easily convert that particular string into decimal form and just check whether that decimal form is a power of 5 or not, right. So uh, for each string, right, starting from index i, I check whether ending at index j, is, it is a valid good string or not. If it is a good string, then I also have to check whether the string starting at j plus 1 uh, can form an answer or not. Only when the string starting at index j plus 1 can form a valid answer, I can take this value. Because I also want the remaining string to be containing powers of 5, right. If 
the string starting at j plus 1 can form a valid answer only then I will take this value and in that particular case my uh, answer for this particular string starting from index i and ending at index j would be equals to 1 plus dp of j plus 1 right. So in that case this will be an answer. If, if, if you are not able to form a string starting at index j plus 1 then you cannot consider this value even if the string at starting from index i and index at index j is a good string right. So even if this is good if the answer for j plus 1 does not exist then you cannot take i comma j right. So this will be our whole idea of the problem. So uh, as I said like this problem was not very difficult and the problem explanation itself took very little time. So let me just quickly summarize what I just said. So uh, we have observed that this cannot be solved with greedy because if uh, a greedy approach would be to take the maximum number of uh, characters together. Right. But if you try to take this, then the remaining characters might not form in valid answer. Right. So what do we need to do? We need to maintain a dp array of size n where dp of i will denote the minimum number of strings starting from index i. So it will be containing our answer just for the string starting from i. So obviously dp of 0 will be storing our final answer. Right. Now for each index i, what we will do is we will traverse the value of j starting from i. So j will be starting from i and j will be less than n. Right. So we need to make this loop j plus plus right. So for each uh, substring starting from i and ending at j what we will do is we will calculate its value right and we will find whether it is a power of 5 or not. So let us say this is a good string that means it is a power of 5. Now I also have to check whether the string starting from j plus 1 has an answer or not because for example if i is somewhere here let us say i is somewhere here and j is somewhere here right. I took this particular substring. Right, I took this particular substring. Now the uh, like the string starting from index j plus 1 should also have an answer only then I will be able to form all the complete string as power of 5. If this start, string starting from j plus 1 does not have an answer like, then I cannot take this current string. Right, I can only take this current string if it is good as well as the string starting from j plus 1 has a valid answer. Right. So if it, is, if it has a valid answer and the current string is a good string, I can form my dp of i as minimum of dp of i. So I, I also have to take the minimum of dp of i. Right. So I have to take the minimum of these values. So the answer will be 1 plus dp of j plus 1. So j plus 1 will be the answer for the string starting at index j plus 1. So if I have already taken the string from index i to j, right. So this will be one string and I will want to find the best answer starting from the index j plus 1, right. So this will store dp of j plus 1 right and this whole value will be stored in dp of i. So this is how we can solve this problem. So let me just show you the code now. So the code might look a little bit but it is not very difficult. Uh, like before starting with the code I just wanted to sh share this one thing. Like uh, it might happen that uh, when you click on this compile and run button and in your code is working fine in that particular case and when you try to submit your code uh, the same code might fail in the same test case result in, in some unexpected value. Right. So it might happen because you are trying to access an index which were out of bounds for the array. So like it, ha it happened with me today and I made two wrong submissions because of it. So what I was doing was I was accessing an index in the DP array which was not a valid index. So in that case when you submit your code it will lead to an unexpected behavior. Right. So make sure whenever you encounter this kind of problem when you try to compile and run it works fine and on submitting the same test case fails then you need to understand that there is, there is some issue with the indexing in C++. Right. So I don't know about other languages but this is the behavior with C++ on this particular platform. Right. So let us quickly start with this particular code. It says that I have, I have initialized a value of size n. So n is the size of the string and I have created a dp vector of size n. Right. So this is my good function which is uh, like uh, used to find whether the current string is good or not. So we will discuss about it later but let us have a look at the for loop for the dp. So I am starting from index n minus 1 and um, till I am greater than minus 1 and I am just incrementing the value of i. So I am starting from right to left, right. So what I am doing is if the starting, if the ith index character at the ith index is 0, I just directly mark dp of i as minus 1. Why? Because the problem statement says that it should not have any leading zeros. So a string which starts with a 0 cannot have my answer, right. So that is why I just directly mark dp of i as minus 1, right. Now I initialize my value of dp of i as 10 to the power 9. So it is a very big value. Now I run a for loop starting from j is equals to i and j is less than n and I do j plus plus. So if the current substring starting from i till j is good, right. So this will be, this is a boolean function. I will discuss it later. Now if it is good, then 
if j of j is equal to n minus 1, that is j is the last character, then I can just directly set dp of i as 1 comma dp of i. So, this is the minimum, but you don't actually need to take this minimum, you can just directly mark it as 1 because like 1 is the smallest value that you can have, right? You cannot have, you cannot have a value 0. So, you can also write it as 1. So, if j is the last character, that means you have considered the whole string starting from i and then you can directly mark dp of i as 1. Now, otherwise, only if if, if j is not equal to minus 1 and there is a valid string starting from index j plus 1, that means j plus dp of j plus 1 should not be equal to minus 1. Then in that case, I can set my dp of i as minimum of 1 plus dp of j plus 1 and dp of i, right? So, one, this one is from the current string and j, dp of j plus 1 will store my best answer from the remaining of the string, right? Now, if g, dp of i is equal to 1 e 9, that means I was not able to find an answer in this for loop, then I set my dp of i as minus 1. At the end, I can just return dp of 0 after this for loop is completed. So, let us quickly discuss what this good function does. So, it is taking a start in the ending uh, index, right? So, I am calculating the current substring as uh, s dot substring starting from the current index and this will be the length of the uh, substring, right? Ending minus start plus 1. Now, I create my value. So, this will store the value of the current substring in decimal form. So, I am just trying to find the value. So, this is just a simple uh, for loop where I am traversing the whole string if current of i is equal to 1. I just increment my value i by one left shift uh, i, right? So before doing this for loop, I just reverse the whole string such that the least significant bit, bit comes to the left of the string, right? So that is why I reverse the uh, current string. Now, while the current value is divisible by 5, I just divide by 5 and at the end, when the value becomes 1, that means the original value was a power of 5. If the value at the end does not become 1, that means the original uh, value that we got was not a power of 5. Right. So, this will return if value equals equal to 1. That means the substring was a power of 5. Now, I have used the lambda function here. So, if you do not know how to use the lambda function or you need more information about it, I made a separate video describing how lambda functions can be used in solving programming questions and how it is more useful than writing a standard uh, function. So, let me just quickly submit this code and show you that this works. I will also leave uh, the link to the video in the i button to the top right of this video. Uh, so, you can directly check it out from there also, right? So, you see that this is uh, completely, this passes all the test cases and the solution is correct. So, I hope that you guys were able to understand the solution and if you guys did, then consider dropping a like on this video. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel. I see a lot of people watch these videos have not subscribed yet. So, if you are one of them, consider subscribing. It's always free of cost and you can always unsubscribe later if you don't find the videos interesting. So, till the next video drops, keep coding, stay safe, bye-bye.